Hi everyone, I'm Vanessa. For as long as I could remember, I only dreamed of one thing. I wanted to be an ordinary kid, but fate had other plans for me. When I had just been born, mom and dad looked at me and decided what my future would look like. Our little miracle, she is going to be a ballet dancer. No, Vanessa will be a policewoman. But their plans weren't meant to be. When I was three, my health suddenly deteriorated. My parents were worried out of their minds and dragged me to all sorts of hospitals, trying to find out what was wrong with me. And one day, a doctor doctor finally diagnosed me. Here are the test results. I am very sorry. Oh no, our poor little girl. I was too young to realize the severity of my disease, but I could see how gutted my parents looked and knew that something was wrong with me. Ever since then, the hospital became my second home. I spent a lot of time there. I would undergo treatment at the hospital and go back home. But after a while, my health problems would come back and I would go to the hospital yet again. The saddest thing was that my illness was incurable and that meant I would have to take medications and spent a lot of time in hospitals for the rest of my life. I was different from other teenagers and couldn't do a lot of normal things like go to school on the school bus because my parents were overprotective of me. It's too hot in the bus. You might get sick. I'll give you a ride and don't forget to take your medicine. I was sick and tired of it. All I wanted was to be a normal kid. Why couldn't I be like the rest of my classmates? It was unfair. My only friend was a red rabbit called Mango. He was the only one I could have a heart to heart with and tell about my worries. One day, for the first time in a long while, I came home in a great mood. Mango, there's going to be a spring dance at my school. I want to shine like the moon in the sky there. Will you help me choose a dress? <laughs> I was ecstatic as I prepared for the dance. I felt awesome to be an ordinary high school student. For me, it was the best feeling in the world. But then, my illness flared up at the worst possible moment and ruined all my plans. The day before the dance, my health took a turn for the worse. I didn't want to say anything to my parents so they wouldn't start panicking again, but my mom's hearing was too good. She heard me cough and immediately rushed me to the hospital. The doctor said I would have to undergo treatment and stay there for several weeks again. It made my blood boil. I had to miss the dance because of my stupid illness. That evening, I was angrily wandering the hospital hallways with an IV drip stand behind me. Then, a spider suddenly landed on my shoulder. I was terrified of those monsters and their hairy legs, so I screamed and tried to shake it off, but it crawled on top of my head. Uh, get off me! A guy in a hospital gown appeared out of nowhere and calmly pulled the spider out of my hair. Why are you yelling? Look, it's cute. <laughs> Oh, I hate insects. Actually, spiders are arthropods. Oh, are you a professor? No, I'm Brian. Then take a dollar and get yourself a sense of humor. You should read more books. We definitely got off on the wrong foot. It was hatred at first sight. We glared at each other and went our separate ways. But then our IVs got tangled and we almost fell. Watch it. No, you watch it. That wasn't the last time I bumped into the bug lover in the hallways. Brian was always carrying a box and putting all sorts of insects he found into it. You're a psycho. So funny to hear that from you, you wacko. It was like the hospital was too small for the both of us. But luckily, the doctors soon let me go home. As I was leaving the hospital, I ran into a tall, handsome guy. He accidentally spilled coffee on me and asked me on a date to make amends. We've only just met and you're already asking me out? Life is too short to wait, right? He smiled and I saw that he had dimples. The guy's name was Mason. That evening, we went roller skating and the very next day, he officially asked me to be his girlfriend. Okay, after all, life is too short to wait. <laughs> I'd never been so happy. Mason was all always around. We went on walks and had fun every day. He always knew how to make me smile and treated me like a queen. Look, Mango, my boyfriend gave them to me. <laughs> oh, I love him. My dream finally came true. I was an ordinary teenager. I even forgot all about my illness and stopped taking my medicine. Vanessa, have you taken your meds? Um, of course I have. Shh, this will be our little secret. <laughs> and one day, Mason pretended to be my brother and convinced my math teacher to let me skip his class. So instead of dying of boredom, I walked around the city and ate ice cream. Things were going great until dad saw us. Vanessa, why aren't you at school? Oops. That's how my parents found out I had a boyfriend. When mom realized I was hiding my meds in the flower pots, she shouted so loudly I almost went deaf. How could you be so careless? You can't go out so often. Think about your health. We forbid you from seeing that boy. For the first time in my life, I was happy and my parents wanted to ruin everything. I got mad and ran away. I came to Mason and told him about my illness and the fight with my parents. Vanessa, to be honest, I'm ill too. The day we met, I found out I didn't have much time left. I want to live my life to the fullest. 
rest, however long I had left. Let's go to some heavenly place on an island, just you and me. I admired Mason's courage. He knew his days were numbered, but still wanted to make the most out of it. I was in a similar situation, so I agreed to join him on his journey. While we were getting ready to run away, my health started to fail again, but I didn't tell my parents anything. They already forbade me from basically everything, even lifting anything heavier than my phone. It pissed me off. It was my life. I wanted to decide how to live it. Your eyes are red and swollen. Did your parents make you cry again? They keep reminding me that I'm ill. I'm sick of it. I get that. Since I'm ill, we get financial help, but my parents never spend the money we're sent on my needs. I'm not mad at them. I just want to enjoy the time I have left. Wow, I got goosebumps when I heard Mason's words. I realized that I would do anything to be with him until the end. When I got home, I looked into our safe just in case. There was a ton of bills inside. Can you believe it? Mason was right. My parents were making money off my illness. The more I thought about it, the sicker I felt. I got dizzy. The world swam before my eyes and I fainted. When I woke up, I was in a hospital ward. The doctor informed me that my illness was progressing and I needed to undergo a long course of treatment again. I growled into my pillow out of anger and resentment. It wasn't fair. I could have been on a trip with the guy of my dreams, young and carefree. But instead, I was in a hospital again. I freaking hated it. I started crying like a baby and thrashing my room. The door was open and Brian suddenly walked past my ward. He was holding a glass jar. I thought there was an earthquake, but it's just Miss Bad Manners. <laughs> what do you want, bug lover? You should ask a spider out. I'd love to, but they won't let me out of the hospital. Then he sat down on my bed and asked me what would cheer me up. I don't know. Mango, I guess? Let's go down to the hospital cafe. I'm sure there are mangoes there. No, I'm talking about my rabbit. His name is Mango. I want to hug him. Oh, well, animals are not allowed in here. Check this out, though. He pointed at his jar and I saw that there were several caterpillars hmm. crawling around in it. Ugh, they're nasty. Look deeper. Soon these caterpillars will become cocoons and turn into beautiful butterflies. I heard butterflies don't live long. So what? They might have short lives, but they are free and can fly wherever they want. One thing led to another and we got to know each other. Brian turned out to be a weird but cool guy. Spending time with him was interesting and fun. We started over and hung out more and more by the day. Vanessa, look! This is so cool! The caterpillars are cocoons now! The nature is full of miracles. Brian had a knack for finding beauty in the most unexpected places, and I couldn't help but admire that about him. And so, one night, we sneaked past the nurses and onto the roof of the hospital. Wow, look at all these stars! Sometimes I come here to think about what will happen after. After? I'm very ill, Vanessa. But it's okay. I enjoy every minute of my life, and I'm surrounded by people who care about me. Maybe one day, I'll turn into a free butterfly too. Tears stung my eyes as I listened to him. Brian smiled at me and said he dreamed of going to an outdoor rock festival. The band I like is coming to town soon. I hope the doctors let me out of the hospital for a couple of hours. I squeezed his hand and promised him we would be fine. Mason didn't forget about me either and visited me almost every day. During one of such visits, I noticed that he didn't look good. He was as pale as a vampire and there was dark circles under his eyes. Mason, what's the matter with you? I'm getting worse, Vanessa. I don't have much time left. If we want to fulfill our dream and spend my last days on an island, we need to hurry up. It will be hard, but I will escape from the hospital. We agreed to meet at sunset and I asked Brian to help me escape. Are you sure it's a good idea? I feel like a caterpillar in a cocoon and I want to become a butterfly. Brian thought a little and then promised to help me. Later, he let his spider free by the nurse's counter. Watch out, it's venomous! The woman screamed and jumped on the counter. It was a disaster. I quickly sneaked out of the hospital after hugging Brian goodbye. Thank you, you're a real friend. Take care of yourself. I ran home as expected. My parents were not there. They must have left for the hospital as soon as they heard I'd run away. I changed my clothes, took all the money out of the safe and kissed my rabbit. Goodbye, Mango, I love you. At sunset, Mason and I met at an old diner as planned. He had stolen his parents' car. Get in! It's going to be the best adventure ever. An hour later, we were out of town. Beautiful music was playing on the radio. The road seemed endless. I was happy, really happy. It would have been perfect if it hadn't been for my parents who kept calling me every second. At first, I didn't answer, but then I snapped. I know that you took the money the government sent you for my treatment. I don't want to talk to you ever again. With those words, I threw my phone out the open window. I won't need it on the island anyway. Mason and I bought everything we wanted with the money I'd stolen from the safe. Unfortunately, we were running out of it quite fast. Soon enough, we didn't have a single dollar left, and we hadn't even left the state yet. Besides, the longer our trip went on, the worse Mason treated me. <sighs> I'm hungry. It's your own fault. I thought you'd steal more money. Quit whining. I didn't want to get mad at him. After all, I thought he was anxious because he was so ill, so I tried not to annoy Mason. Soon things took a turn for the worse. Mason's car broke down, and we ended up stuck on a highway during a raging thunderstorm. Mason tried to fix the car, but quickly gave up and came back. I looked at him and gasped. The rain had washed off his makeup, and now Mason looked confused 
completely healthy. What the heck? Did you only just realize? I lied about being sick. The day we met, I came to the hospital because I had a toothache. Nothing serious. I just thought it'd be fun to take you on a trip. I wanted to slap the living daylights out of him. The nerve of that bastard. I got out of the car, slammed the door, and wandered off. Ugh, whatever, I'm better off alone anyway. I was walking along the deserted highway, sobbing. The rain was lashing my face. I felt dizzy. Maybe from hunger, or maybe because I escaped from the hospital before getting treatment. I'd thrown my phone away and didn't have any money with me. I'm such a moron. No matter how hard I tried, soon I couldn't take another step. I fell to the ground. But before I passed out, I saw that a car had stopped nearby, and an elderly couple was walking towards me. When I opened my eyes, I was back in the hospital. What am I doing here? That's when I realized my parents were sitting by my bedside and holding my hands. Some kind old people found you and called an ambulance. The doctors checked your ID and drove you back to our hometown. And then we were called to this hospital. Mom, Dad, I'm sorry I ran away and made you worry. What matters is you are safe with us again. The money you found in the safe was for your treatment at a private clinic. I'm so naive. I believed a crook instead of my own parents. I burst into tears again and my parents hugged and comforted me. After they left, a wave of anger swept over me again. Because of Mason, I spent all the money that could have been used for my treatment. I even tried to come up with a plan to take revenge on that pathetic liar. Then I realized that I really wanted to talk to Brian. I went out into the hallway and slowly walked towards my friend's room. To my surprise, it was empty. So I came to the nurses. Excuse me, was Brian discharged or transferred to another ward? The women exchanged heavy glances and then one of them put a hand on my shoulder. Brian passed away the day before yesterday. I'm really sorry. What? No, I couldn't believe it. A pit dropped to the bottom of my stomach. I fell to my knees sobbing. The nurse handed me a cardboard box. You're Vanessa, right? Brian asked me to give this to you. I carefully opened the box. To my shock, butterflies flew out of it. They looked beautiful and free. As they fluttered into the air for a few moments, the hospital hallway turned into a magical land. I was mesmerized by the sight of them and smiled through my tears. Then, I saw that Brian had left me a note in the box. Dear Vanessa, please don't cry. You've been angry with the world for so long, but that's a waste of time. You should enjoy every moment because you never know which one will be your last. I will always be there for you. Your bug lover. I pressed the letter to my chest and felt warm inside. Brian, I will never forget you. His words made me rethink a lot of stuff. It was true I'd wasted the money mom and dad had been saving up for my treatment. Maybe it would have helped me, or maybe not. Who knows? But for a short time, I felt free. Soon, I felt a little better. I was discharged from the hospital and tried to lead a normal life again. I studied, looked for new hobbies, and played with Mango. And then one day, I saw Mason in town. He was flirting with some girl and pretending to be terminally ill. What did I do? I just walked past them. I didn't know how much time I had left, but I decided to take Brian's advice and enjoy every minute of my life, and not to waste it on being bitter and getting revenge. I didn't forget Brian's dream of going to a rock festival, and decided to fulfill my friend's wish. Fly free. I lay on the fresh grass and enjoyed the music, when I felt a light breeze on my face. It was like Brian was there. I dedicate this story to my friend. Please comment heart emojis to support me. Be sure to subscribe to the Private Diary channel and like this video.